references for credits and criteria related to inspection and fire flow testing of hydrants are shown here. As the name implies, credit for inspection and fire flow testing of hydrants is divided into two parts. First, there's the credit for hydrant inspections. This credit is based on the frequency of those inspections, and there is additional credit offered for flushing and pressure testing programs, as well as for back flushing dry hydrants and pumping from cistern suction points and dry hydrants. Then there's the credit for fire flow testing of hydrants. This is a new credit introduced in the new rating schedule. As with hydrant inspections, this credit is based on the frequency of the testing program with additional credit offered for having a hydrant marking program that indicates either flow rate or main size. When a community has hydraulic water modeling program, full credit for fire flow testing may be earned. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Finally, if records of inspections and fire flow testing are incomplete, there will be a 25% deduction in credit and if there are no records of claimed tests, there will be no credit awarded. Let's look now at how credits for hydrant inspections and fire flow testing are calculated. For hydrant inspections, we can see that the maximum credit for annual inspections is 30 points. Keep in mind that the formula calculating credit for hydrant inspections shown to the right of the table compares credits earned to 50 points that are possible. So where do the other 20 points come from? You can earn an additional 10 points if your inspection program includes a flushing program. You can earn another additional 10 points if your program includes pressure testing the hydrants. In areas without hydrants, the 20 points can be added if the inspection program includes back flushing dry hydrants and pumping from cisterns, suction points, and dry hydrants. Let's look at a couple of examples. In this first example, we see a graded area that does annual hydrant inspections using the checklist found in American Water Works Association Manual 17, and their annual inspections include flushing and pressure testing programs. This area has complete documentation of their hydrant inspections. Using the frequency of inspection chart found in the schedule, we apply 30 points for doing the inspections annually. We then add 10 points for their flushing program and another 10 points for their pressure testing programs result in their earning all 50 of the available points. When we do the math, this area earns the full four points for hydrant inspections. In the second example, we have an area that inspects its hydrants annually, but they do not do them in accordance with American Water Works Association Manual 17, and they do not include flushing and pressure testing programs. Looking at the calculations, we see that they earn 30 points for inspecting their hydrants annually, but we do not add the extra 10 points for the flushing programs or the other 10 points for the pressure testing program. Doing the math, we see that they earn 2.40 points. The inspections are incomplete because they did not use American Water Works Manual 17, so a 25% deduction is made, and this area earns only 1.8 of the four possible points. Let's look now at credits for fire flow testing. As I mentioned earlier, this is a new credit offered by the latest rating schedule, and it's worth three points. Just like with hydrant inspections, the credit is based on the frequency of the fire flow tests, with maximum credit being earned by fire flow testing every hydrant in the distribution system at least once in a five-year period. Notice in the formula shown to the right of the table that the denominator is 50 while the highest value in the table is only 40. So how do you earn the other 10 points? If there is a hydrant marking program in accordance with the general criteria of NFPA 291 or American Water Works Manual 17, the points for frequency may be increased by 25%, bringing the total possible points for the frequency of testing to 50. As with all other areas of the rating schedule, when records of having done flow tests are incomplete, PIL will make a 25% deduction in credit, and if no records of claimed tests are available, no credit will be awarded. Finally, the new rating schedule awards full credit for flow testing in communities where there is a properly installed and calibrated 
hydraulic water distribution system model that can produce static pressures and flow predictions at 20 psi residual pressure. When such a system is available, PIL will still flow hydrants for properties considered in our evaluation of the water supply system. The full credit will be earned for the frequency of fire flow testing. Let's look at a couple of examples of how credits may be calculated. In this first example, the graded area does main capacity tests on 25% of its hydrants every year on a predefined schedule to complete flow testing for every hydrant in the system within a four-year cycle. All hydrant bonnets are painted to indicate the flow rate of the hydrant. Based on the frequency of inspection chart in the rating schedule, this area earns 40 points for testing all hydrants in the distribution system within a five-year cycle, and because they color code their hydrants based on NFPA 291, an additional 25%, or 10 points, can be added to that. This means they earn all 50 of the 50 points possible for frequency of testing, and when doing the math, the resulting overall credit for fire flow testing is 3 out of a possible 3 points. In the second example, the graded area flow tests its hydrants on a four-year cycle, but the test is not a main capacity test using at least two hydrants. Instead, a single outlet on a single hydrant is opened and a pitot tube is used to determine the flow rate of water from this single hydrant. In addition, hydrants are not color-coded to indicate their flow rates. This area will earn the 40 points for testing all of their hydrants on an interval of less than five years, but they will not earn the additional credit for a hydrant marking program. Doing the math results in their earning 2.4 out of the three possible points. But wait a minute, the flow tests were not done in accordance with NFPA 291 or American Water Works Association Manual 17, so there is a 25% deduction for having incomplete tests. Doing a little more math, this area's final overall credit earned for fire flow testing of hydrants is now only 1.8 out of the possible three points. In closing, the final calculation of credits for inspection and fire flow testing of hydrants is the sum of the credit for hydrant inspections and the credit for fire flow testing. The maximum available credit is seven points. This concludes my presentation related to credit for hydrant inspection and fire flow testing. As always, we at the Property Insurance Association hope this information has been useful to you. If you should have questions about this presentation or any other rating related topic, please do not hesitate to call. In closing, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention, and I hope you have a great day.